today I'm playing with a new hair tool to the market. The new Dyson Coral. This is their flat iron that supposedly is super innovative product. A new hair tool that will change and blow your life away. This thing retails for $499. I picked it up at my local Ulta. I wanted to test it out for you guys, see why is it so expensive. And I know that's exactly where you're gonna say, why are you so expensive? Supposedly, this is the only straightener with flexing plates that shape to gather hair. Let's try her out. So if you're wondering what comes in the box, you obviously get the flat iron. This is what she looks like. This is, I believe, the first color. It's more of like this darker gray. Why are you scratched? That's not cool. So this right here is what it looks like when it's locked. And then also what comes is your little charging dock station. This is what it looks like when you plug her in and it just charges. You can see it's fully charged. I already charged it to make sure before we film this video. And then this right here is the charger, the magnetic charger that you can also just put right on to the flat iron and it also swivels, which is really nice, but it's not that strong. You see, I kind of lifted up a little bit and it came off. So I'm not sure you can style with it on while it's charging because it does come off pretty easily, like without any force. So there's a little switch right here. It unlocks. This right here is the battery. These are the plates. I'm going to touch these because they do say they're flexible, but it feels more of like floating plates. They kind of move around but I feel, I honestly thought they would be a lot more flexible. Let's turn her on, little on button right there. And now they do have heat settings. They have three temperature settings, 330, 365, and 410. We're gonna go up to 365 because I am going to compare it to one of their competitors or they compared it to. They compared it to this one, the Bioionic. This is the Graphene MX. You guys already saw my take on this. You saw my review. I'm gonna compare it to the Bioionic 10X vibrating plates. And this one, I have it set at 360. This one's going to be 365. Andre put the timer on. And I think this is a good day to straighten my hair. <laughs> we are warmed up. I'm gonna brush the hair through. Make sure there's no random knots. And let's just go for it, right? Mm -hmm. Go for it. It looks like it's really hard to the hair. Like I'm being very gentle, I'm trying to be. I mean, even though it kind of struggled to go through the hair, not bad. And they do say one pass is enough. And I feel like that's where they're coming up with less heat, less resilience, and that's why it's less damaging on your hair. But that was not that smooth. <laughs> try, try the other ones, one to one compared. One to one? Let's do this side now. And I don't have any product in my hair. This is just, my hair is just very randomly curled and textured. I mean, you guys see how smooth that is, right? I feel like I'm going a lot faster than the Dyson. I feel like the Dyson did a better job though, especially towards the bottom. Lower. Yeah, it kind of forced me to go really slow on that. Yeah, there you go. Second pass is beautiful, very smooth. Okay, I honestly thought these plates were gonna be a lot smooth. I thought these plates were gonna be very smooth and they're not. The like kids create creating a lot of resistance. I feel like it's pulling the hair also. But it's doing a pretty nice job. I like how the ends are looking and it feels very nice. So I'll give it that. It feels very nice. The ends feel great. Gonna get those pieces underneath. Like you see how it's separating the hair itself? I 
I think the hair is, I'm, I'm barely pressing it and I feel like it's still having quite a bit of a hard time, but the hair does feel very smooth. Like I'm, I'm barely trying to press it and it's still, I'm just holding the ends to just help guide. Just to even out the force. Yeah, just to even out the force. That's kind of good, but I can still feel the curl in my hair and it's not as smooth. So I would definitely go at least one or two more times like I've been doing. So you definitely have to take small sections, which is unfortunate and it's more work. One thing I do wanna say, the tip, it doesn't, it's not too hot, which is nice, but this is definitely, it's not a one pass. Unless you're going on the highest temp which is 410. Should I do go to 410? Yeah, pick on the last section you should. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do 410 on the top because I feel like that's where I have a lot of texture right now. Just because I'm already so used to this flat iron, I can take wider sections and it gets the job done rather quick for me. The ends look sleeker and straighter on the Dyson versus the Bioionic. Now let's go in a second time, maybe even third time. And you can see now that the hair is somewhat sleek and somewhat silky and smooth and not as much texture, it can go in through the hair quite easily or easier. And now I can take a lot bigger sections with the second and third pass. All right, I'm gonna keep 400, 410, and we are pretty much a little bit less than half on the battery. How, what's the time right now? 25 minutes. It's 25 minutes. All right, so it's heated up to 410, because you heard that little bloop bloop, that little beep. And I'm not really pressing too hard, I'm just kind of letting the plays do the work for me, hopefully. Once you get into the higher heat setting, it has a little bit of that um, that burnt smell. That could be the leave-in conditioner, that could be the oils that I have in my hair from three days ago. All right, I'm noticing that I'm getting a lot more of a static reaction with my shorter hairs that are growing out. On the Dyson side, there is a little bit right here on the Bioionic side, but it's still, it looks very smooth towards the top. And then once I bring the hair forward, you can see that the Dyson side, it looks very sleek from top to the bottom of my hair versus the Bioionic, you can see it still has a little bit more volume, which means it's not as straight and it's not as sleek in comparison to the Dyson. They feel very similar, but when you touch the hair one to one, you can see that the Dyson, even I can feel the Dyson's a little bit smoother, it's softer. I think I'm just gonna continue, finish this off, and I'm gonna keep it at 410 just to finish it off a little bit faster because I still want to curl the hair. All right, the flat iron died around, what was it, 45 minutes? 45 minutes. Andre timed it 45 minutes, and it just basically turned off, shut off, and I like that it was giving little, little reminders, a little beep, it's getting lower, 
beep, it's getting lower. So it kind of gives you a little insight of what the battery life is doing. Let's say if you're doing your hair and if it beeps, you're like, okay, I need to maybe put it back on charge or always. So I did not keep, I did not put it back on the stand while I was doing the hair. Cause that's what they say. You can put it back on the stand on the battery right here to keep it charging, to keep it going while you're doing your hair, while maybe I'm talking to you, but I really wanted to see how it would do, how long it would last on a full charge, how long it would take to kill or drain the battery. So overall, I think they look very similar, but in a full result, when it's all done, <laughs> the Dyson looks better in my opinion. And I'll explain why. You can see that even, I try to keep it with one pass the rest of the hair after we try two to three passes just to see what it's gonna look like. And I think it did a much better job. It definitely, you have to work a little bit more to get better results. For example, you have to do a lot less sections, a lot smaller sections, not less sections. You have to do a lot more sections because the sections are a lot smaller and thinner to get the best results. And honestly, when I'm touching the hair, it feels very smooth. Even from the very top, when I'm running my hair through, there's not as many kinks and there's not as many bends in the top of my head in comparison to the Bioionic. And I think the Bioionic definitely held its own. And I think it did a really good job, even though it is on a lower heat setting, it's at least five to 10 degrees lower behind the Dyson because I couldn't, I tried to keep them a similar, similar temperature, but they just didn't have such even temperature settings. <laughs> so there we have it for straightening. I think pros, <laughs> it definitely looks better. It's not really blowing my mind. It's not blowing me out of the water, <laughs> but it definitely do, it definitely did a really good job. I think the negative is the plates are not as smooth and it kind of struggles to get through certain parts of the hair if they are if the hair is very textured or at least on mine it did kind of struggle a little bit. So that's not gonna save you from heat. Yes, yeah, so that I don't think it's gonna save me from heat in the long run just because you are doing that and it's kind of creating that resistance a little bit and it's putting a little bit more force and more pressure and it's putting more heat on the hair in the long run. Battery life is not optimum. I kept it for 45 minutes, but I only did half of the head, even though I didn't keep putting it back on the charging station. I just kept it on my table and then didn't use it for those minutes that I used the Bio Ionic. So I feel like a lot of people with really thick hair really coarse hair, really unruly hair, very curly hair, you are gonna basically be rushing and you're gonna be <laughs> trying to defeat the time for the battery life. You're basically going to be battling the battery and see which one is going to prevail, either you or the battery is going to win in the end. So that's kind of the thing. I definitely think go to Ulta go to Sephora if they have it up for display. Literally, see if you can try it out. I don't know if they're gonna let. I'm I'm not sure how many places there will be for you to test out this product since it is regarding hair. I do think some places are letting you test it out on your hair before you buy it, which, I mean, I would hope you could, right? But then somebody would have to sanitize it, clean it, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's so expensive, you know what I mean? Just looking at the packaging, looking that it's already scraped right here. You know what I mean? Like this is this is not the most fanciest packaging, but I do like how they hid the battery right here in the center. It kind of hides. I like that it closes really nicely. I mean, just everything Dyson does, they do a really fabulous job. Like job, all of these little buttons, all these little switches, they they feel and they they feel very substantial they feel solid and they feel good you know even just little this little magnet thing that's that's beautiful and i love that it, it it tells you that hey i'm charging i'm intact i'm good to go just everything it feels good you know just some things don't feel luxurious that's kind of what i want to say but overall i think it's really nice i do like all the little features that they have added like the oled it's, I mean, it's just, 
I, I think it's an overkill, like why do you need an OLED, OLED screen? But I do like that they have the temperature setting. It tells you, I like all the little reminders that it gives you. They're not annoying. They're very simple. They're very, they're very like, hey, I'm here. I didn't forget about you. You know what I mean? And then they also have this airplane mode. So if you travel a lot, I'm not gonna touch it, but you basically pop this out and you're good to go to travel with it. So the battery basically turns off, it does its own thing so it doesn't combust <laughs> or you know whatever else. So it's TSA approved, all that good stuff. So I'm just gonna put this, just gonna hide this back down. One last thing I wanna mention, I wanna mention that I appreciate the cordless feature. I've already tried out so many cordless hair tools and my appreciation just for them grows deeper and deeper because they're super convenient and they really, really cut the time so much in styling the hair because we don't think about how much this cord takes away from us in terms of, first of all, convenience. Convenience factor is massive. I don't have to sit here and look where my nearest outlet is. I have to have something close by. And then also it does get in the way. You find yourself, or I find myself always fixing the, the wire, the cord, from left to right, from back to front. With the cordless tool, it's not there. You don't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? You're free to do as you're pleased. Yes, they're a little bit more heavier. They're definitely a lot pricier because they're not. there's not as much competition on the market. And batteries, they're so expensive. And there's only so many people that make batteries for certain hair tools. So is this worth $500? So Andre and I kind of talked about it. All Dyson products, they're very expensive, right? Let's just start with their vacuums. Their vacuums can range from what, like $2.99 all the way up to six or $7.99, I believe. They're, they're expensive vacuums. And we have, we have a cordless vacuum and we have a corded vacuum. They both work phenomenal, but the cordless vacuum, the battery sucks. Like, I mean, it just, it's not great. <laughs> whatsoever and the more you use that vacuum and especially on the max suction it dies even faster even if you do let it die out and then you charge it to the full charge it just the battery just is not great dyson is not known for their battery so i feel like i hope i hope they're using somewhat of a different battery but i doubt it since they're probably using similar batteries but then the corded vacuums, those are phenomenal. I still haven't had an issue with them. They have great suction. They're one of the better vacuums that we have tried. And then their hair dryers. I have their air wrap that I love and I still use to this day. I think it's one of the most innovative designed tools to come on the market for hair. It's phenomenal. And then their original supersonic hair dryer, it's one of the most powerful. It's one of the best designed and it works phenomenal and there's a reason why it's so good because it does cut the drying time and it cuts the drying time so much that you can really see and feel a difference in your hair. So with this, I feel like this tool should have been around the $300 price range, maybe up to 350, just because if you are adding the battery, that's like an extra 50 bucks. And then if you're adding the flexible plates, that's another extra $50. So you're adding an extra $100 too in comparison to already a luxurious flat iron, like $200. If already you have all of that like temperature technology, you have the material technology, the plate technology. So. This, I think for $500, it's too much. In my personal and professional opinion, from testing out all of the hair tools, I do like that they're trying to use different plate materials. For example, they're using copper alloy and they're using flexible plates, which to me personally, what basically it does, it just kind of puts the hair together and keeps it in a straight line all the way down. And I think that's why the results, they're very straight. The results are very consistent from where you started to where you ended. In comparison to a standard solid place for a flat iron, it has a tendency to flare out the hair. You guys saw it in the plates as it goes down. So it's essentially doing this to the hair instead of this it's kind of flaring the hair out down. So it's not as even or consistent from the where you started with the flat iron to where you ended. So you guys saw at the very top, I kind of just wanted to see what the hair would look like if I took the section and I kept it very similar all the way down. And it did very similar results 
in comparison to the Dyson. So I feel like that's what the flexible plates are doing. They're just keeping the hair very in a straight line and very even, in a very even straight line. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Thanks. good. Interesting, very interesting. All right, I'm gonna turn those back on and we're already pretty much charged halfway. I'm gonna curl only several sections. I just wanna see how it performs and I wanna curl it a couple of different ways. I'm gonna take kind of a wide section. I just wanna see how this performs. I just love those little, those little reminders and they're very nice, they're not obnoxious. They're very, you know, beep, like hey, I'm here. That's a, that's a nice little addition. It doesn't beep aggressively over and over again. You guys know what I'm talking about. Con air. Con air. <laughs> So I'm just gonna twist as I would. It's pretty smooth because it's already straight. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't it curl, right? Did a really good job. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's good, but it's already super smooth. I definitely wanna try this when my hair is a little bit more textured, like I had previously. And now we're gonna try to curl it going like this. See, even that way, you see how it's keeping the hair all together? It's not fanning the hair out. And I'm not really having a hard time with it because it's keeping the hair all together. It's flexing the hair together in that one straight line, straight motion. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's beautiful. What can I say, right? It's, it did a fabulous job. All right, you guys. I think I'm gonna end the video here. I think I've said pretty much what I wanted to say. I'm definitely gonna keep using it because A, I bought it, and B, it's gonna be sitting right here at my table on its little charging station. <laughs> Always charged, fully charged. And put you back on the charging station. Back to your home where you belong. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video, for spending time with me. I know this was more of a lengthy, in-depth review but I wanted to give it a very fair review, a fair shot, and compare it to one of its, one of the better flat irons on the market, in my opinion, that is just a very straightforward flat iron that also has vibrating plates, and it's also quite expensive, but it's a really great investment, in my, my opinion. But what do we think? Do we think the Dyson hair dry, hair dry, do we think the Dyson flat iron corral, corral is, overpriced? Do we think it's an investment? Do we think it's just right there where it should be since it is a Dyson and they put a lot of technology, they put a lot of design, they put a lot of brain and a lot of engineering behind their work. It's not just a white label, a white or private label product. They really put a lot of money behind their product. So I think a lot of that pricing does stem down to how much money did they invest before they even put this market out, put this tool out on the market. So, but for now you guys, thank you for watching, spending time with me again, and I appreciate all of you and I'll see you in the next one very soon. Bye.